Hi everyone, this is Melbel Samo with Kidabber Software, and this is a video tutorial on how to use the Qt rule Save to SharePoint command. The Save to SharePoint command, as the name implies, allows you to save attachments such as a file, a set of files, an image, or a set of images in your InfoPath forms into a SharePoint server. That is, to reduce the size of your XML forms and allow these files to be accessed without opening up your forms in InfoPath. So, let's get started. We'd start by opening a blank template in InfoPath Designer. In the Fields task pane, let's go ahead and add a new field. We're going to name it File, and it will be of type Base64. Click OK, and let's add a new attribute under the File field. We'll name it QRules link. Click OK and add another named QRules file name. OK. Next, we'll drag the file field as a file attachment on our canvas. You may also use a picture control for image attachments. Note though, IPFS do not allow picture controls. That's why we recommend using a file attachment control instead. This allows you to attach any file including images. And it works in the browser. We'll also drag the attributes QRules link and QRules file name as text boxes on our canvas. And then we'll add a button. Let's label it Save. This button will have a rule that triggers the Save to SharePoint command. And before we add that rule, we need to inject our form template with Q rules. So let's go ahead and save our form template first. Let's go to File, Save As. I'm going to call my form Save to SharePoint form. Let's click Save. And now we can close our form template in InfoPath Designer. You'll see here on my Q rules injector, I simply browse to my form template, which I saved in my E drive here. This new version of Q rules will automatically select my InfoPath form template version. And since I'm designing an InfoPath 2007 filler form, then that's automatically set for me. I just need to switch to a rich client because that's what I have. I don't plan to use this template in a browser. But if that's not your case, then simply select Browser. Let's click Inject. It's telling us to back up our form. That's fine. Click OK. And it injected successfully. Click OK and now we can close the Key Rules Injector. Going back to the form template in InfoPath Designer, the next step is to add the rule in the Save button here. But since the Save to SharePoint command requires the XPath parameter, let's grab the XPath for our file attachment field. So copy XPath. We have that on our clipboard. So now we'll add a rule in the Save button, select that, and click Add Rule in your Rules menu. When this button is clicked, we want to set a field's value. And the field to set would be coming from your Cadaver Rules secondary data source, which got added when we injected Cure Rules earlier. So switch to that data source and locate the command field. There we go. Click OK. And here's where we begin typing in the syntax for our Save to SharePoint command. We always start with the command name, so type in Save to SharePoint. And then we'll specify the URL parameter, which is the URL to our SharePoint library, where we wish to save the attachments to. And we'll, we'll grab that a bit later. For now, I have the XPath for my file on my clipboard, so let's call the XPath parameter. And let's paste the actual XPath. Go back to the URL parameter there and Let's grab it on my Internet Explorer here. And this is my images and files SharePoint library where I wish to save attachments to. I'm grabbing the URL and pasting it on our command syntax here. So there's our full command syntax, save to SharePoint, the URL to our SharePoint library, and the XPath to our file attachment field. Click OK. And there's a rule. Let's name it save to SharePoint. 
You'll see it setting the value of the Kadabra rules command field. There's her syntax. We'll be testing that in a few. But for testing purposes, it would be helpful to see the Q rules result and any error it may throw after the command executes. And we can do this by switching to your Kadabra rules secondary data source and dragging the result, success, and error nodes on our canvas. And since we'll be testing in preview mode only, which means our form template is not published in the SharePoint server, we need to make this form full trust. So in form options, go to security and trust and select full trust. Click OK. And we're ready to preview now. Let's click on the attachment field and I'll select a file which is a picture of our logo, the Kadabra logo. And then I can click on the Save button. You'll see it's uploading the file to the SharePoint site. And there we go, there's the link to our uploaded file. The attachment field is now empty, which means it's no longer, the file is no longer in our form. There's your file name. Result returned one because there's one uploaded file. Let's verify if it indeed got uploaded in our SharePoint site here. Refreshing. And there it is. When designing your actual form, you'd want to make this link a hyperlink, probably displaying the file name. You can even add a conditional formatting to hide the attachment field. For example, when success returned true, which means it successfully uploaded the attachment to your SharePoint site. Some things to note, if you're uploading more than one file or image, the source field itself must be repeating, not a repeating field in a repeating group. Also, QRules will perform no action if the user calls the rule with no image or file attached. So when you design your info path form, you would want to add a rule that only e executes when the image or file attachment is not empty or not blank. And uh, most importantly, the info path form in the SharePoint document library must live on the same machine. That's about it. That's our video tutorial for today. To download Cure Rules, visit our website www.kidabra.com. Thanks for watching.